The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. It's time to go on the mat. The Cedar Valley's longest running radio show devoted entirely to wrestling. Brought to you by Rolling Ford and the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum on 1650 The Fan. Welcome to On the Mat. I am Jeff Bradley. This is the special edition once a month of the UNI Wrestling slash PWC, that's Panther Wrestling Club, edition of On the Mat. We're going to have three segments today. The first one is going to be Brett Robbins, volunteer assistant coach at the University of Northern Iowa. We're going to talk a lot of international wrestling, PWC guys, former PWC guys. Uh, segment number two is going to be Joe Laser. was an All-American for UNI a couple years ago. He actually competed in the U.S. Open. <clears throat> last weekend, and we'll get his take on how he competed and, and where he sees himself uh, hopefully qualifying for the wor- world team trials and making that world team. And then our last segment's going to be uh, soon-to-be graduate from UNI, Cooper Moore, one of the captains on the team, three-time uh, national qualifier. So it's going to be a great show. We're going to start it out right now with Brett Robbins, UNI wrestling coach. How are you doing? Doing all right. How are you, coach? So you just got back from Las Vegas on yep. uh, probably Monday, didn't you? I got back Sunday got afternoon. Sunday, Sunday night. Yep. And great wrestling out there again. So we'll, we'll delve into that. But weather good out there because it was bad here. It was nice. I got laid Eight. out a little bit on Sunday. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Like 75, 80? What are you talking? Probably in the 70s. Yeah, it makes me jealous. That makes me really <laughs> jealous. So before we get into the wrestling part, um, let's – backtrack and let's talk a little pwc and this is more club fundraising things how to get uh how does somebody get in touch with pwc hey i want to i want to golf maybe in the fall or we've got another event in the summer um let's talk through some of those things and and how people can get uh acclimated with us Well, first and foremost we have a, a website panther wrestling so you can go on there and it'll show you our roster guys we have training here uh, kind of our history of guys we've sent to the Olympics, have made world teams, things like that. We have a shop. But you can go to PantherWrestlingClub.org. You can also show you how to donate. And then it has our upcoming events. And for us, uh, we're doing uh, two golf outings this year. So the first one, it's called the PWC Central Iowa Golf Outing. And that's going to be in the Des Moines area. And that's going to be uh, June 24th. And that's going to be – it's helped put on by uh, – some former Panther alums, Hal Turner, David Bonet, Mitch Johnson, and uh, they're getting that done there. And then we'll have the PWC Schwab Mob Golf Outing, which we do every year here. It's a big fundraiser for us, and that's going to be August 26th. And then our last one before the new year is our sporting clay shoot, and we've done that a few years in a row now, and that'll be September 24th. So they're all good events. All goes into fundraising, goes into you know, athlete stipends or going on trips for, uh, you know, for club athletes or for summer university trips, things like that. So it, it's a big deal for us to be able to fund these guys and keep them involved. So let's go back to that very first one. That's a brand new event. Um, Des Moines area, Ankeny, is that what we're talking about? I believe so, yep. Okay. And and some great, great UNI Panther supporters down there. So like you said, any more questions, they can call, obviously, the wrestling office. They can get on the website. and uh, Yep. And I know the one in the fall, the Schwab Mob one. I mean, it's every year over 200 people, so it'd be great. To it get sells to, out. Yeah, it's a good event. It's it's great to have all the support from the community and all the coaching staff going to be down there, as far as we know. Yep. Okay, that sounds yes, good. Sir. Okay, let's move on to the U.S. Open, and we're going to talk about um, Joe Laser a little bit. I also want to get your take on a couple guys that competed last year. Now they're gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Clone's down at Grandview now. Yep and blazes out west out in california so let's go through those three guys and and tell me what your thoughts on those guys competing this weekend well i guess i'll talk about i talk about cologne first just because i'll uh, get laser last but you know joe joe plays six out in the open he um you know he's he's a tough gritty kid and he he gets by with that stuff and and he just hangs in there and fights and battles his, his butt off. And he made the semis and lost to uh, Brandon Wright, a kid who uh, he wrestled at Grandview, actually. But he's not a bad wrestler. He's a Fargo champ in freestyle. He's from Indiana. So 
Um, you know, Joe beat some good guys. He wrestled Laser, beat him. He beat um, Seth Gross. You know, he made the semis. And after that, he defaulted out. He's he's banged up a little bit with some injuries, so he's dealing with that. But he made the semis. He placed top seven, go to the trials. So he qualified, and he decided to sit out. And then uh, Blaze Cabell, you know, he's a heavyweight for you and I. He went out to Fresno State, and he's part of their Valley RTC now. And he wrestled at 97 kilograms. And Blaze was a match out from being in the medal rounds. He lost 4-2. So, um, you know, Blaze, it's good. it was a good move for him. You know, he's going to have some different trainer partners, which I think really attracted him out there. But, um, you know, obviously you just always try to continue to improve and get better, and he's got to do that out there. And I'm sure he'll be wrestling in the Northern Plains here um, in three weeks to qualify. And then uh, Joey Laser, uh, one of our guys, uh, 61 kilograms, and he he went one and two at uh, at the open. But I was actually really impressed with how he wrestled. Um, he was beating he was beating Cologne by by seven points with about a minute left and lost. And then he was won a match, and then he was wrestling uh, Chris Dardanes from Minnesota. He's down at the Hawkeye Club now, and he's beating him by six with about 20 seconds left. So there's some positions and some situational things that he needs to shore up and and get crisp at. I just feel comfortable in there, but I was actually impressed with how he wrestled and controlling his emotions, controlling his breathing, and some of those things he's been working on. So um, in three weeks, I'll have the Northern Plains qualifier up in Rochester, and you know he'll be there because he needs to qualify to get a spot. And there's going to be some other guys there wrestling too that didn't make it, you know, didn't qualify a spot on their own. So it would be some co- tough competition, but um, – you know, I, I like where he's at right now, and he's got to continue to get better and build and shore up those those things he needs to work on. Where are they holding that last chance at? It'll be in Rochester, Minnesota. Um, it's it's at a tech school up there. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head what it's called, but they've had uh, the Minnesota Storms had a tournament there the past few years, the Christmas tournament, and it's at the same place. So um, it's in three weeks, and uh, get laser fired up and ready to go for it. You know that used to be in Waterloo for years and years and years. Yep. Is it is it gone for good? Is it rotating around or, or have you, you know, heard anything? I, I'm not sure the details on that, but yeah, it was in Waterloo for a number of years, and uh, just this past year they decided to move it up north. So, okay, well let's talk a little about uh, the other action out there. So let's start at some weight classes, and we'll start marching up. And I've got some specific questions about specific guys, but yeah. let's uh, probably start with Ramos, I guess, right? Yeah, I'll just say first and foremost that there's some incredible wrestling at the U.S. Open, and um, they moved it to the South Point Hotel again for the second year, and it was it's a good venue. They they had the mat set up different. Um, they had ten ten mats total, but seven were on the main floor, so it was it was pretty nice. You could watch a lot of wrestling at once, and at the same time they had the the Greco uh, Greco World Team trials were going on at the same time, and then they had the women's World Team trials going on. So a little mix of everything. Um, women's wrestling in the United States is getting better. Uh, the, the the females that that made their teams, I mean, they were actually really fun to watch. They had some. There's some that have some incredible skills. Um, Helen Marulis, you know, gold medalist. She's really good. Really good. Uh, Victoria Anthony, uh, 48 kilos, I believe. Um, some really really good skills. Uh, Tamara Menson, Mensa, excuse me. Uh, she won. She beat. She won uh, the 75, I believe, for females and. Uh, you know, she was the first female, I believe, to win the Uregan for the United States. So um, women's wrestling in general, you know, continues to get better, and the United States women are getting better. And then Greco was fun to watch, too. You know, I, I have a Greco background, so it was it was fun to watch and to see those guys battle. And, you know, we keep messing with the rules and, and things like that. And, you know, they might need some touch-ups in Greco, but it's just fun watching those guys battle. So that, that was going on at the same time, but just incredible wrestling overall. And uh, I guess to start with your first question with Ramos is that guy's a competitor, man. He uh, he knows how to win. You can never count him out of a match. And, you know, he had some close matches throughout the tournament, and, you know, he finds ways to win every time. So uh, he beat uh, Nashon Garrett in the finals, and, you know, he looked pretty good doing it. So um, he sits for the finals at the trials, and, um, you know, he's looking to make another world team. Yeah, I actually thought it was Nation's year to kind of break out. It still might be, but uh, man, he's just he's just so rangy and he's quick and he's good. But but you're right, Ramos. He he just he almost just doesn't lose. 
No. Or, or, you know, he, he can lose any match at any time or be losing and just will somehow find a way in that last 10, find 15, 20 seconds to win the match. Yep. Well, let's move up to the next weight. 61 kilos. Uh, Kendrick Maple won the weight. He wrestled uh, Brandon Wright. And for, I guess, people listening, probably in the state of Iowa, Brandon Wright wrestled at Grandview and was a national champ there, I believe. So, um, you know, he came back three, wrestled, and, you know, he beat some good guys. He beat Johnny DeJulius. He beat Cologne, you know, and he made the finals. So, um, but Kendrick Maple, he was on pretty much on another level. He uh, he had some some really good matches. He wrestled Cody Brewer. That was an entertaining match, back and forth match, matches with challenges. It took a while, but um, it was a fun mo- match to watch. And you know, he pretty much controlled the finals. I don't. He scored early a couple times, real quick, and then kind of backed off. And then he got another takedown in the third. But he let Wright stay in it a little bit. But it was a uh, it was a good match. So, Maple, I thought his last year at college bumped up to 49. 149, yep. So is he huge at that weight class? Yeah, I mean, we he was cutting weight at the same place we were, and he he's really lean right now, yeah. and he looked, you know, I mean, he's he's a pretty lean dude, yep. but, uh, you know, he has a whole day to recover with the weigh-ins the way they are, and um, he actually, he wrestled at this weight two years ago. I don't think he wrestled last year, but two years ago he was at the same weight, and uh, he lost to Dennis in the semis at the World Team Trials, so... Um, he's making gains, and you know he says he he wants to beat Steber. You know he's got the world right. champ at his weight, so right. he's got to continue to improve. You're listening to On the Mat with Jeff Bradley and you and I volunteer coach Brett Robbins. Let's keep moving on. Uh, 65 uh, kilograms. Um, Jordan Oliver won that weight, and that's a uh, you know I think he kind of thinks it's his weight, even though he hasn't been the guy. But he was behind Brett Metcalf for a lot of years. And now Metcalf's kind of taking a step back um, this year, and Frank Monero made the uh, made the Olympic team, got fifth at the Olympics. You know, lost a couple of close matches to some high level guys, and uh, Monero he he beat Zane Rutherford in the semis. He beat Monero in the finals. So um, that's a good weight class. When you it's throw a good weight. Oh. I mean, all these weights are. I mean, yeah. they're all really tough, but he. Uh, he had a close match in the semis with um, Zane Rutherford. He was actually losing. He went in on a shot. Zane reshots, gets his leg up in the air, and maybe he wasn't really trying to finish. But he's, I think, he's being a little more tactical. He was winning the match, and then uh, Jordan uh, tried the high flyer type throw, and this is where the new rule, the correct throw, comes in. And Jordan Oliver gets awarded two points for it, and it's. Maybe it was the right call, maybe it wasn't, but, you know, it just, it is what it is, and, and guys got to make adjustments off of it, but, um, you know, he used this new, the new role to get into the finals, and then he actually looked pretty good against Monero in, in the finals, I thought, so, um, you know, Oliver, he's the champ, and he got his o, U.S. Open title. Does it seem there's just too much gray area in the, at least in the international rules? I mean, you've got, now you've got the correct throw, or the correct technique you've <laughs> you know shot clock I don't know I mean I watch a guy and I, I don't know if you should be put on the shot clock and it, it just seems like there's a lot of a lot of ways where the referees can just stick their nose in it when they probably don't need to yeah I mean you know if there's zero zero they usually step in and they'll stop a match and then you know attention and then you go wrestle again for another 30 seconds and they stop it and then okay now you gotta get put on the clock and then if no one scores they stop it again or if you grab fingers they stop it or right. I mean there, there's a lot of Involvement from the officials where right. maybe they should just let the guys go and just, you know, just go wrestle. Yeah, I agree. Okay, let's move up to the next weight class. So this is a guy that, that kind of gets overshadowed a little bit, but he's got a, a world bronze medal, and that's James Green. And he, I think he only gave a, well, he re, he beat Nolf in the in the semis, but I, he hadn't given up a point until that match, and then he only gave up a point in the finals. But, um, you know, he's a solid, he's a solid wrestler. You know, he's got a world bronze, and a lot of people talked about Burroughs and Dake, that match, and then David Taylor, how well he looked. And um, I think James Green gets overshadowed a little bit, but um, an incredible wrestler, uh, still training at Nebraska. And I thought he looked real sharp. He looks really big for the weight, looks strong, explosive. So he beat uh, Nazar uh, Kluchki, which I know I didn't say that right, so I apologize. <laughs> but, um, you know, and Nazar, he's, he's a good wrestler. He only... He didn't. I don't think he gave up a point the whole tournament until the finals, and he he lost four one. So, um, 
you know, it was, it's fun to watch those guys wrestle and kind of how the tactics, they work. But uh, that was the final for that. And then, Donald, you want to go on the next one or skip it? And come well, I'll, I'll make a comment on Green. I mean, uh, and I agree. You, it seems like you have all these guys that other people focus on, even like a Ramos and guys like Green's tough. Green's real good. Oh, he's great wrestling. And a lot of people, it's almost like they just almost skip over that when they're talking mm-hmm. about the U.S. team. Yeah. yeah. That guy can compete, and he's real good. Let's move up to maybe the feature. Was that the feature, uh, the yeah, duel, maybe? It, it was the feature match, and, and they moved it to the end on purpose, and it was, it was Burroughs and Dake, and obviously they have a storyline, kind of, you know, going back even years ago, and, uh, you know, Dake almost beat him at the trials, and then Burroughs came out the next match and put an exclamation point on it. Or if he, if, if the rules wouldn't have changed or whatever, you know, uh, you know, Dake would have won, but they made some rule changes, and... But uh, last year, Kyle Dake went up. Obviously, you know he's trying to make an Olympic team, so he went up and and he didn't. He got second at eighty six, and he went back down to seventy four, which you know he says is his natural weight. And I heard Rob Cole on an interview saying he weighs less than one hundred eighty pounds in all of his clothes, so it probably is his natural weight. And uh, you know they wrestled in the finals. It was a good scrap. Um, maybe some controversy involved. You know, with they getting put on the clock twice in the second, but uh, well, at the end, I guess. And then, you know, I mean, it is what it is. You know, refs are going to get involved, and you know, Burroughs is is the champ. I mean, he's one of the top wrestlers in the whole world, in the entire world. So, I mean, if you want to, you want to beat him, you're really going to have to beat him and score more points. So, it still bothers me that there's not. You know, a two-two, and you've got a winner. That still bothers me. I don't yeah. think that's ever not going to bother me that somebody wins on criteria. Right. There. I I don't understand why we can't let them go another minute. Nick score went turn off a clock. Nick score right. wins. I I really don't care, but let's have a winner. Yeah, they they both score the exact same amount of points. So that had my little frustration coming out there in the on in the at the U.S. Open. Mm-hmm. Well, we just have about another minute or two, Brett. Let's keep rolling. Let's go. Uh, I'll run through these quick. So eighty-six, uh, David Taylor. Yeah, he looked like a man on a mission, and he looked he's looked really good since the World Cup. So he, uh, you know, he won the Open, but he's got a guy at his weight, uh, Jaden Cox, who has a Olympic bronze. So we'll see what happens at the trials, and then. Uh, but he looked really good. He he beat everyone pretty bad, and then uh, show some love here for a Waterloo guy, Kevin Gatson, uh, first U.S. Open title. And I know he said in an interview, it's not how he wants to win or. It was three zero, or maybe he's gonna mm-hmm. have to do more to win at the um, at the trials because he's got Kyle Snyder at his weight, and uh, Kyle Snyder's only lost to a couple of Americans the past few years, and one is Kyvin. So, um, Kyvin looking to step his game up, but he looked really good at the trials, you know, adjusting to freestyle, and um, looked good for the weight too. I thought so. He did a really good job, and then at heavyweight, Nick Gwizdowski, heavyweight from NC State. Uh, two-time champ. He beat Zach Ray, who's kind of been number two for the past few years, right. and he hit a really nice ankle pick on him in the finals to get a get a solid score. And then, you know, he closed out the match with the win. So that was the U.S. Open finals results, and look forward to seeing what happens at the trials. Well, appreciate all the updates. Um, it was great talking to you again. We'll be back with on the mat. Twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week. When all you want is sports, all you need. Is 1650 the fan? Welcome back to On the Mat. I am Jeff Bradley. We have our next guest just got down, got a big glass of ice water. He's all comfortable. <laughs> Freshly back from the U.S. Open out in Las Vegas. Joey Laser. Joey, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Not too bad. So, first of all, before we start talking about wrestling, are you fully, you consider yourself an Iowan now? Or are you still a Georgian? Uh, are, you I would, a, are you a dual citizen, maybe? I've, I don't know if I'm a dual citizen anymore. You know, I'd probably go back home for not even a month. So I, I would consider myself finally an Iowan. I got an Iowa license. Um, so, yeah, definitely definitely love it out here. Okay, let's. Uh, we're going to talk about the U.S. Open in a second. But I want to get your take on the transition from Division One college wrestling. You were an All-American a couple years ago for you and I. Uh, transition into, I mean, that's a bunch of that's a meat grinder tournament, the NCAA tournament. It oh, just yeah. is. But now what you're doing is you're taking all the best guys from that tournament, and they're wrestling international. So maybe a transition and how 
is there a mindset difference? Is there a different way you need to treat your body? Just what's the difference between D1 and then actually committing and, and going for a, you know, a world championship? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, every step is, you know, you're taking the best of the best and you're putting them into a group. Then you're taking the best of those guys and putting them into a group. So there's always little things that you can do better, you know. Um, a big thing that I think, uh, I mean, mental aspect of everything is huge, whether you're Division One, Division Two, you're going internationally. Um, uh, the style change was a little hard for me uh, right away right. because, you know, I was a scrambler. I rolled around a lot. I exposed myself a lot. And uh, right away I definitely got in myself a little trouble. So a little transitioning on more controlled scrambling. Um, I can still do some wild things and make up some moves, little sidewalk slams here and there. But uh, it's definitely more controlled. Um, lifestyle, I think, is huge. I talk to our coaches a lot. Um, I talk to Cruz a little bit about it. Um, if uh, There's like three things that, you know, if you want to be the best of the best, you got to do all three. If you want to be, you know, pretty good, you could probably do two. And if you're just doing one, you're kind of just clocking in and clocking you're out. You're kind of fooling yourself, really. Yep, yep. yep. You're, you're faking yourself into thinking you can do what you're doing. Um, and one of them, definitely lifestyle. Um, that includes sleep, nutrition, all that stuff. Your training, you know, every day. You don't need to be on the mat, but, I mean, whether it's watching film, nutri- or watching film or um, just going in and sauning or just relaxing some days. Some days relaxing is what you need instead of going right. in there and grinding every day. Absolutely. Because uh, in college, you definitely do the grind. I mean, it's definitely a grind. And, uh, I mean, we are getting older, you know. When I was in college, freshman year, I could I could probably grind every single day. Right. And I'd be fine the next day. Now it's like, you know, I go through a hard practice on a Monday. I'm still feeling it on Thursday, you know. Yeah, that's I, I think that's a huge component where, <clears throat> and I think a lot of guys are getting better at it. But it started where the way you practiced in college – you didn't know any different. Nobody told you, but your body starts breaking down faster. It recovers longer. So I always thought, hey, let's let's train for the competition instead of just train. You know, yep. so it, if you need to take two weeks off, you take two weeks off. But then you also got to be honest about, okay, how's my body feel? What do I need to do here? And 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 some guys aren't disciplined enough to do that. Yeah, you definitely have to know the difference between feeling hurt and actually being hurt. You know, there's there's difference between being injured. And then having a, na- a nick or knack, you know, somewhere banged up a little bit. Sometimes you just got to, you know, push through those. But whenever you're hurting, you got to know when to, you know, back off a little bit. So was this, the, this was your third U.S. Open. Is that right? Uh, my, I, was, I think it's my sec- second. Okay. Because last year I didn't get to compete because I had Tommy John. That's right. So, yep, I, yeah, yep. I was putting three years together, but you weren't. Mm-hmm. You weren't. T- let's, let's not talk about the one that just got over. Let's talk about the first one. And what do you remember from that? And then we're gonna we're gonna fast forward two years, and then we're gonna talk about this one. All right. Um. So yeah, the first one was my second competition of freestyle. You know, when I was coming through high school, I wasn't a big freestyle wrestler. So I, I just got finished up with the Schultz. Had a I did it all right over there. You know, still learning the style and figuring it all out. Um, first match came out had Coleman Scott, uh, returning Olympic bronze medalist. Right. Um. We had some pretty fun exchanges, you know. Uh, I threw him for four twice. Um, ended up losing because I tried to throw him for a third time and got caught. Uh, just because, I mean, that's, that's what I do. I go out there and I keep people entertained. I have fun while I'm out there. I'm not, that's a not, re- that's not a scared to do theme. things. <laughs> I'm not scared, to, no. not scared to go out there and try it out. Or you will open it up. There's put it all out there. It. Exactly. I'm, I'm going to put points on the board, whether it's for me or for them. Um. And then the backs, I don't really remember much. Um, I, I knocked off a couple guys, and then I, uh, I think I got beat by Northwestern. I can't remember his name. I think he was from Northwestern. Okay, so can you compare that your first U.S. Open to the first time you qualified for the national tournament from you and I? I mean, was it the same thing like the unknowing nerves or, or or were you mature enough by this time that you the lessons you learned in college you took it with you to Las Vegas um when I was in college I I don't know I had a I had a little swag to myself when I was walking around I kind of you know you got to believe that you're going to do something before you actually go out there and do it 
You know, if you're if you're second guessing yourself at any time, then there's those doubts that you don't need. And uh, that's something I try and focus on a lot is, you know, I, I know I'm prepared. The coaches prepared me the best they can. I'm doing everything to be prepared. So there's really no reason to to be nervous. Now, you're going to get those nerves, and you got to know how to redirect them and make yourself feel better. And uh, I don't know. When I was going through college, I definitely, I definitely had a, a route to get those nerves off me and I had a mindset where I knew I was ready. Right. And uh, in the Open, that first time I went, I was nervous. Because you know it was a big kind. It was my probably my first real big competition internationally, um, but I, I redirected the nerves great, and I felt good when I was out there wrestling. I might have been a little tense and you know trying to hold on and squeeze a little sure. bit, but uh, when I let loose, I just let let it all go. You're listening to on the mat with Jeff Bradley and Joey Laser. So now let's go to uh, some other competitions you've had. Just pick out a match or two. Maybe the, maybe the Schultz you wrestled in that. Um, New York Athletic Club, you wrestled in that. Yeah. A couple highlights from those tournaments. Um, Yeah, the New York tournament was uh, the world team trial qualifier for uh, December because uh, 61 kilos was a in-between weight or non-Olympic weight. So, um, yeah, I uh, lost the first match to Josh Kindig, a uh, great competitor. We've wrestled twice now. Uh, we've had some fun while we're wrestling. Um, I was... Up by two or three with about 30 seconds left. <laughs> and, yeah, you're going to get a lot of this. Uh, and uh, I got taken down, and I tried to scramble, and I ended up putting myself in bad position to get turned, and he ended up taking me down and turning me for four points. So instead of just giving up a two, I gave up four, and then there's no time for me to try and retaliate or get points back. I ended up losing by two or one to two by him. Um. I don't remember the Schultz. I got bad memory. But, uh... Well, let's move on to last weekend, then. I yeah. know you... It's only a few days away, so you <laughs> got to be sharp as a tack on that. Yep. So, I see the draw come out, you know, I don't know, it was a Thursday or Friday after you guys had weighed in. And I'm like, of all the guys to wrestle... Right. You know, a friend, uh, a guy you scrapped with in the you and I room, we were talking about Joe Cologne, um for four or five years or more. Yeah, at least. So first well, first impression on seeing that draw, and even though it's a guy that you know and you're familiar with, is it just another guy at that point? Um, Yes and no. Uh, I mean, yeah, me and Joe, we trained together for five-plus years through college. We trained for three years since we graduated. So we both knew each other. I mean, I knew I was mentally and like physically probably the best I've felt in a long time. Um, I was just ready to go out there and rock and roll. And, uh, whenever I saw the draw, I kind of, I don't know, for some reason I knew that's who I was going to wrestle before the draw actually came out. Yeah, that's kind of like, weird. In my head, I was yeah. like, yeah. dude, I'm going to wrestle Joe. I know it. And then he comes out and beer. I was like, Hey, you know who you got? And I was like, nah, who you got? Or who do I have? And he told me, and, uh, I knew it was going to be fun. I was going to go out there and I mean, he knows what I was trying to do. I knew what he was trying to get to. And uh, we both put it all out in line. So let's let's break it down a little better because that was a great match. And I guess you could argue it either way. I don't care who you're pulling for. I mean, you're up you're up by eight points. I think at one at one point in that match, end up losing. So whoever you're pulling for, you're going, man, Joey out wrestled him, or Joe won the match. I mean, you could play it either way. Yeah. But just kind of go through, you know, the the minutes of the match and yeah. Um. So right away. Uh, I knew what where he was trying to get to. I mean, he's an underhook guy. Everyone, everyone in the country knows Joe Cologne. He's going to try and get underhooks. He's going to try and jack you up. He's going to try and you know put some points on the board. So uh, I was wrestling real smart at the beginning of the match. You know, I stayed down. I stayed low, but uh, he was quick. He got to a shot right away. Got to my ankle. Got in a little flurry. He uh, took me down and turned me. But then we went out of bounds. So he was up four nothing right away. Um, and in my head, I'm just like, you know, whatever. It's just four points. Like, I'm just gonna keep on wrestling, keep keep getting the positions, and you know, I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna get myself. And I'm gonna interrupt real quick. Against some guys, four points is like a death sentence. <laughs> Against you, it's you're right. I, I agree with you. It's like four points. Like, let's keep wrestling. See what happens. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because anytime I'm gonna throw you. Anytime I'm gonna try and get get underneath you, I'm gonna put some points up. And uh, we got another little scramble, and um, uh, I ended up throwing him for four. And then giving up a one. So then it was five to one. 
and um, then I, I didn't get any turns. I tried to try to get to a gut, couldn't turn him. Um, uh, so it was five four, and then he took me down, and then it was somehow it was seven five. Um, I got a takedown. It was seven seven. And then uh, there was like five seconds left on the clock, and he dove in. I ended up in the chest wrap and popped him through. So end of the first period, you're looking at a 9-7 match. I mean, that's 16 right. points in three minutes of wrestling. That's a great match. And, uh, I mean, that's usually end of score matches when you add them all up. Yeah. So that was only in three minutes of the match. So I go to the corner, um, you know, be Robin Cruz or calming me down, relaxing. I'm breathing good. Um, they just... Tell me, keep on wrestling, you know, keep getting to positions where you want to be at and keep on pushing the pace. Uh, I know I'm in great shape. Um, so I go back out there and uh, we start tying up wrists. You know, we got into positions we actually never, like, not really gotten to. You know, mo- I'm trying to get to shots and stuff. He's trying to get to underhooks. We were actually both taking shots, which <laughs> usually doesn't happen. Usually someone's going up big and the other one's trying to go big too. And uh, open the period up, got a nice sweep transitioned up into a, a body lock and ended up throwing him for a four and uh had him flat i thought he was pen referee obviously didn't think so right. but uh ended up getting a four right away um so then 13 13 seven you know i'm up by six um and then uh he started getting to where he wanted to he took a shot and got to his underhook and I knew that's where he wanted to be. I tried tried winging down. I tried digging back inside. And he ended up foot sweeping me for four. So then now you're looking at 13-11. Uh, um, I think I got a... I somehow reversed him off his foot sweep. So then in 14-11. Um, and then uh, we were wrestling. He uh, My elbows got loose. Uh, definitely something I need to work on is end of matches, closing them out. But my elbow got loose, ended up body locking me again, put me flat, uh, rung my bell a little bit, didn't feel too good, um, ended up, he ended up uh, getting the fall. Right there with all those top guys, though, I'm telling you, and I think you know that. So then you come back into Wrestleback and win your first one. Let's talk that through real quick. Um, uh, so uh, I had no idea who this guy was, um, so I was just going to go out there and wrestle, and I just went score, 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 and I uh, ended up. I was up ten to two and ended up getting the fall. Yeah. So it was pretty it was a pretty quick match. I got on the mat, got to my attacks, got on top, turned him and got the fall. And then actually a big match and you're pretty familiar with Dardanes. I think you've worked out with him up in Minnesota and yep. you scrapped a couple times. He ends up beating you and he ends up getting on the ladder. I think he was yep, top seven. Yeah, yeah, he got top seven. So obviously you beat him. And that's another one where I think yeah. from memory you're up seven or eight, aren't yep. you? Or six maybe. Yep. I think I was up by six and uh I stopped wrestling at the end. I don't. I, I don't know. I uh, just maybe for a second I stopped defending a leg lace, and he ended up wrapping up my legs and turned me twice, and uh, ended up beating me by two or three. So, so you think that's a lack of focus, or is that just hey man, that's my style. I'm going to score a bunch. More than likely, he's going to sp- score a bunch. I just want to have one more when it's all said and done. Yeah. Um. So I've kind of gone back and forth. Uh, last tournament um, at the Schultz, um, at the Schultz, I was winning and I uh, I kept going. I kept trying to score a bunch of points and I ended up getting pinned because I tried to go big again and pinning myself. So at this tournament, I tried to go opposite direction and I tried to get to a controlled tie and controlled position. And I think as I did that, I kind of tensed up and froze. So. Now at this next tournament, I'm going to try and find a happy medium between going big and kind of stalling. So I got I got to find that happy place for me where I'm not overly exposing myself, but I'm not just hanging on to try and win. No, and there's an art form to that too. I mean, because <laughs> I, I don't even I don't even know if I consider that stalling on the. I, I mean, it kind of is on the on the open just level. Just controlled. But there's so many guys that are so good at it, and yep. they're so hard to move anyway. And if they get your wrist, well, that's about thirty seconds. Yep. You know. So you did talk about your next competition. Are we talking the last chance? Is that the one, or yeah, you have something got, before that? Yeah, I've got the last chance in three weeks. So uh, I got to get, you know, I got Nick banged up. Got to you know refocus and get ready for that. 
and that's all or nothing. You have to win that. Yep, you have to make to, the trials. Yeah, you have to win this tournament to make the trials. So there's going to be, you know, the guys that didn't make it at the open or didn't make it in other tournaments. There's going to be a lot of guys that are going to be trying to get that last spot for the world team trials in June. So we just have about a minute, minute and a half left. You know, you talked about thinking about your style and, and wins and losses. So get a little introspective here for a second. What do you think it's going to take to get you over the hump? And I don't, I don't think it's a big hump. I mean, it's it's like a little molehill. But what's it, what is it in your view that's going to get you over that little molehill? Um, I like I said, I I feel like mentally, physically, like I'm right there with those guys. Um, nutrition wise, I felt like I was doing everything right. My body felt good. Um. You know, it's something that I think I'm going to have to kind of really think about, you know, talk to Doug, talk to the coaches and um, try and try and pick their heads on what they did. What what did they do to get over that hump? Because everyone's been there. Everyone's had that wall or that door they've had to open up. And, you know, maybe you don't have the key yourself, but you got to be open to ask other people. And I think that's a huge thing with anything in life. You know, if you don't have if you don't know the answers, don't be afraid to ask or else you're never going to find that answer. So about 30 seconds left. This is probably an unfair question. Let's say you're wrestling the World Team Finals. You win the match, and you probably don't care, but if you win the match, you're on the World Team. Who do you want to beat? If anybody in that weight class, who do you want to match up with? Um, I haven't wrestled Logan Stever. I've never wrestled that guy. Uh, I think it'd be fun. He's he's kind of a guy I feel like I, I might. I'm probably going to catch that dude when I'm wrestling him. I feel yeah. like I can catch anybody in anything. Yeah. But I, I definitely want to wrestle Logan Stever and uh, see what I can do against him. Okay, Joey, I appreciate you being on today, and good luck uh, at the Last Chance Tournament. Thank you very much. We'll be Have back with On the Mat. Log on and listen online at 1650thefan.com, the online home of 1650thefan. Welcome back to On the Mat. This is Jeff Bradley, my last guest, last segment. Mr. Cooper Moore, he's a senior. Well, wait a minute here. You're a senior, but... Since it's finals week, and if you're done, <laughs> technically you've graduated. Yeah, technically I have. Yeah. Congratulations! Anybody congratulate you yet? Because I, uh, my mom did <laughs> earlier. Okay, well, so. I guess I'm number two then. <laughs> yeah. But congratulations, long, long journey, and um, like I said, you're you're not even a senior anymore. You're done. You're a three time qualifier for you and I, and. You got your Bachelor of Arts, I believe that's Bachelor of Arts, Political yes, Science. Is. Yep. And usually when people do political science, they either sell shoes or go to law school. <laughs> and you're not going to law school. But we'll we'll talk yeah. about but but what what brought you to political science? Just interested in it? Yeah, I was always interested in government and politics. Um, you know, if through high school and um I did want to go to law school, I thought. Um uh, before I got into college, and so that's something I thought would benefit me for um, to set me up for law school. And um, but I kind of had some plans change and decided to take a little different route. But never too late, because you know I was. I, we've talked about this. I was political right. science too, and it was real interesting. But then you better go get an advanced degree yeah, at definitely. some point. So, and you're a lot smarter than me, so law school wasn't going to happen. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's still good for you. Now I do have one political question for you. Then, so you're, you're seeing all this out of you know Berkeley and yeah. you know all this freedom of speech and all this and that and the other thing. Uh-huh. And I went to you and I. Now I went to you and I 25, 30 years ago. Right. And I could tell a few stories, but do you think it's the professor's pretty fair there for all viewpoints, or, or do you see a slant one way or the other? Um, you know, I think depending on what class you take and what professor you have, it's, it's going to be different. I know in the department that I was in, um, there were a little more um, biased uh, opinions and, uh, you know, you definitely got to see that with some of the teaching. Uh, so, but some of the professors did a, a great job, um, you know, giving both sides of um, each view Right. You know, so th- it just really depends. But I think overall, I think United has done a better job um, nationally than a lot of majority uh, schools out there. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think just there's a little bit of a liberal bias in yeah. most schools. And I think you and I is probably l- a little bit mm-hmm. where I was a lot more. Right. Michigan, I would think, would be a lot more. But, yeah, I think uh, by and large, pretty fair. Yeah. So how does it feel? I mean, you're done with college now. 
Yeah. How, how's that feel? It's a relief. It, I feel yeah. good. Uh, you know, it's it's good to finally be done with school. Um, I don't really have to worry about assignments anymore or anything like that. Uh, so it's it's really nice to be done. So talk just a little bit about uh, some of the really important people in your life. And, and it could be when you were just a, a youngster or all the way if you, if you just met somebody this year that really influenced yeah. in you and you really lean on. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, you know, growing up, I think every coach that I had, whether it was baseball, football, wrestling had an important um, part in my life Um, especially my high school wrestling coach Randy Baker Um, he had a huge role um, you know in really developing me as a man Um, and I mean still does to this day you know I still get to go back home and I've shingled with him a lot in the summer and so he's always been a good guy to you know has always really invested in me um you know, and then just being around the coaches here, you know, have been great. Um, and then I guess my teammates even, you know, here, you know, being around great guys, being around guys that are like-minded, that are willing to, um, you know, enhance you as an individual. Um, and then my siblings, you know, just to have the support and, uh, you know, love for one another that we do, you know, that, that's really affected my life. So we had, a, excuse me, we had a a, a reunion um, right before the MAC conference tournament that was at U and I, and what it was, it was it was basically an all year reunion. Didn't matter when you graduated from U and I, and I know Doug and the coaching staff put a ton of time into. I think they sent out four or five, six hundred yeah. invitations. If you can That's make great. it back, you know, we'll wrap it around the conference tournament, and we're gonna have a, a good meal, and we're gonna have. Uh, just some great speakers, starting with, you know, Don Briggs, Chuck Patton, obviously Jim Miller, who coached here and then went to Wartburg. Well, there was one guy that had not graduated yet that talked, and one guy that was currently on the team, and that was you. Yeah. And whoever's idea that was was brilliant. <laughs> but I want you to just talk a minute or two about the thrust of that of that speech you had, and the reason why is because. I probably heard from at least half the crowd that the best speech that night was you. Mm. And it's, I've listened to Jim Miller my whole life. If you ever have a better speech than Jim Miller, you better take it and run with it, you know? So it it was awesome. People loved it. So I just want you to, for the audience here, just talk a little bit about uh, what you talked about during the alumni. Yeah. Well, I think it was your idea, wasn't it? Well, (laughs) see, I wasn't even going to say that. It was my idea, but. Yeah, well, that's funny. I didn't know you knew that. But yeah. yeah, I, I kind of put a bug in somebody's well, ear, and I go because you, you weren't even on the program. I go, I'm, right. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm calling him up because he's three months away from graduating. So whatever, he's a, he's going to be an alumni. But I go, you've got like a grown man's mind in a in a twenty two, twenty three year old body, and yeah. I go, we need somebody to represent the current guys, mm-hmm. and there's nobody going to represent better than you. So well, just just talk that through uh, a little think, bit. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, so that was a, a great opportunity for for me to speak at, you know, especially with all the alumni back, um, guys that have, you know, been in, involved in you and I wrestling for, you know, years and years, you know, so you get different generations of mm-hmm. wrestlers with different coaching staffs that came in. Um, so, you know, I, I just uh, wanted to thank them and, and just to let them see how important they are to to the program now because, you know, I know like, you know, I think the guys sometimes when they graduate, um, you know, they kind of feel they have a lesser role or right. um, even feel forgotten. And so, you know, I just wanted to show them that we don't forget about those guys. And, um, you know, because, you know, the program always becomes about the current wrestlers. Um, so uh, I just really wanted to um, illustrate, you know, how thankful I am to have an alumni support that we do. Um, how they've affected me as a wrestler here. And, um, yeah, so it was a great opportunity. It was a um, great um, night. Uh, you know, I just kind of spoke from my heart and how I really felt. And, um, yeah, so that was really the basis of it. Yeah, it was it, it was great. And, I, you know, maybe we have it on videotape. I don't even know, but yeah. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to actually show recruits that yeah. and say this is, you know, this is what – your boy can be. Mm-hmm. So 
I don't want to take a lot of time talking about your your wrestling career, um, only because you know obviously you talk about it all the time. This last year was real tough, you know, getting hurt. Yeah, and I mean, I told Doug when you got here, I think I was watching you work out with uh, Ryan Loader. Mm-hmm. You were a fresh, true freshman, <laughs> and I go, this guy's good enough to go right now, Doug. Yeah, I go, might have to train him a little different. But this guy, can, he, he's ready to go right now. So at that point, you know, you come in as a true freshman. You know, I mean, come on. You know yeah. you're pretty you, – I can hang with – I'm hanging with all Americans right now. Right. So just kind of give me your general view on on your career and if there's any regrets or, or even if you kicked around an idea doing a – trying to get a medical red shirt for yeah. next year. Yeah, so, you know, coming in as a freshman, you know, I – you know, not to be boastful, but, you know, I just little things, you know, transition things. I, I had an edge on a lot of guys yeah. and, you know, that goes off to my high school coach. Um, but, you know, and I guess looking back at it now, I, w- I would have liked to see, you know, what would happen if I if I did compete as a true freshman um, to see if that would have changed anything. You know, I'm not sure if it would have. Um, but, you know, just looking back, you know, it's just kind of fun to bounce those ideas off. No regret in my, um, my time here at all, but... Um, yeah, um, you know, just kind of going through the program. Um, my experience has been great. Um, you know, I'm glad I chose to come here. Um, you know, I don't think um, I would have gotten the tools if I would have uh, went anywhere else, you know, because the, the things I've taken away here in my time here, the situations that I've gone through um, and what I've learned from them, you know, I don't think that would have happened anywhere else. So I'm, I'm thankful for where I'm at um, and what's happened um, and then getting hurt this this last year, um, that was a challenging experience. Um, yeah, and I did, I did think about um, the the you know, medical red shirt and stuff, but you know, I was thinking, man, I'm I'm, I'm getting <laughs> injured, you know, consistently now. You know, kind of, there's always been something year after year. Um, you know, and, and after my pec tendon blew, you know, I was, I don't want to go through that again, yeah. and and I think it's time to kind of be done. Time to move on. Right. So you, in my view, that you, this is the best senior class, I mean, by far, that you and I's had. Yeah. Um, well, I should back up. That Doug's had in his mm-hmm. seven years that's went through. And not only from a win-loss standpoint or a talent standpoint, but just solid guys. Yeah. Just solid guys. So I'm going to throw a couple names at you and just give me either a reflection on them or, or a quick story. And I want to start with, Along with you, I think the heart and soul of the team is Dylan Peters. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a guy that everyone just, I mean, the guy walks into the room and, and you just know what he carries. And, uh, you know, you, you know when he's about ready to speak, you better listen. You know, he's always had a great effect on everybody that he's come in contact with. Um, you know, there's still, still some... I'm still a little bitter my freshman year with him because freshmen have to carry around the scale. Yeah. And every time it was Dylan's turn to carry around the scale, the coaches would feel sorry for him and, and, and take the scale for him. Oh. So, you know, every time it was my turn, you know, I didn't have the cute baby face I guess Dylan had. But, yeah. Well, let's move on to Jared Bartell. Yeah. So Jared's been really my roommate for five years. Um you know, probably my one of my best friends I'll ever have in life. You know, um, yeah, he's been great. You know, he's a big dummy, anyways. But <laughs> you know, I guess he's my dummy. Uh, you know, but he's he's helped me through a lot. You know, we've helped each other through a lot. Kind of gone through some injuries, similar things with one another. And uh, but there is one story I gotta tell with Jared. Um, our house, we poured water, a whole trash can full of water on him from the top of our second floor of our house <laughs> and I hit him with one trash can he backed up right on the other window and my other roommate Kurt Mays hit him with another trash can full and we I think we locked him out of the house for at least over an hour because we thought we were going to die and then uh came with inside steam, steam must have been just oh, rolling yeah, out of his ears I was scared I thought I was gonna have to get out of town for a couple weeks but he didn't talk to us for three days and that's probably the hardest you know, mental breaking I've ever witnessed was from Jared Bartell. Well, I, then I need to tell a real quick one about Bartell. So I, <laughs> I, I'm trying to think if that was his freshman, your guys' freshman year, maybe sophomore. 
and I think he's wrestling crumb weedy. Yep. And see, you're you're probably wrestling. You're practicing too, so you don't you don't get the full effect. But I'm kind of watching him, <laughs> and it's getting pretty. It's getting pretty feisty. And old crumb weedy ends up. I don't know. Some people say he threw an elbow. You know, stuff happens, right. or or he ran into the door. Well, they're out in the hallway, so we kind of go out and get him to bring him back in. And Bartell's just gushing blood from his eye or forehead or something. And I think Doug grabs him and he goes, uh, he goes, Bartell, you're bleeding. Go over and go over and see Troy, the trainer. He goes, Coach, I ain't got time to bleed. Yep, that's that's the famous quote. <laughs> that is classic. And I actually think about that. I told Doug that at the at the banquet last week. I think about that quote probably like once a week. I don't know why. It just pops in my head and makes me laugh. So yeah. that's what I think about Jared. So we got just about a minute or so left. How about Mr. Mark Jolkover? Yeah, Mark, he's he's an inspirational guy, you know, just coming in and, um, you know, God bless him. But, you know, I mean, he obviously wasn't as talented, you know, just athletically um, as some of the guys. Uh, but just to see him stick through it and, and take, you know, really some of the beatings that he did, uh, you know, I guess a guy like me, you know, I really took that and like, wow, you know, I was thankful for what I had, but, you know, you know, this guy is willing to go through this, sure. you know, so yeah. um, it was inspirational to me and, um, yeah, he's been a great guy, guy full of wisdom, um, big, a career, big career in, in front of him for sure. Just about 40 seconds left, Cooper. Um, I know you're going out west. You're going to Redding, California, going to ministry school. Yeah. So now you got about 30 seconds. Just tell us, hey, what's that all about, and, uh, and when do you take off? Yeah, so I'll take off in August and um, basically uh, be training in uh, ministry and, and you know, outreach and international uh, ministries and stuff. There's different missions and things you can do. Um, so I'm excited for that. I'm excited to operate and, and learn how to operate in ministry um, in the future. And so I'm taking a chance with it right now. Let's see where I go. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show. Yeah, and you. want to thank all the fans out there yeah, for definitely. supporting amateur wrestling, the yes. greatest world sport in the world. Good night. You've been listening to On the Mat. The Cedar Valley's longest-running radio show devoted entirely to wrestling. Brought to you by Rolling Ford and the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum on 1650 The Fan. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.